Okay, well, we're live, and uh, great to have a few people here for our first CMOOC webinar for the second half of 2018. And I know it's the just the start of the academic year over the other side of the hemisphere where, where we have a couple of our participants, but uh, we're kind of almost getting to the end of our year here in the South Pacific. So um, I'd like to welcome Ian, Ian Upton, all the way from okay. Coventry. And uh, Ian is involved there with um, academic development and, uh, and doing a lot of expertise in virtual reality. And Ian's been involved with, uh, with us several times with the CMOT Sumuk, and I've got to know Ian by visiting over there, and he's bought me coffee, which has been very good. Very nice. And I'm going to add this time, Tom, I know I've sat here for the last two sessions going, do you know I'm actually going to put my portfolio in, but this time I'm putting in my portfolio. So Excellent. <laughs> as well as just chatting, I might actually do something. <laughs> well, I think that could actually be a common theme. Then next on my screen, we have Raj. Now, Raj is actually the newest member of our team at CFLAT uh, at, at Auckland University Technology. So uh, Raj has joined us from Auckland Uni. And... Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Raj. Oh, we can't hear you, which is yep. probably a good thing. Yes. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes, we can. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Well, lovely to be here. Um, as Tom said, my name is Raj. I am a clinical audiologist by training. Wow. And uh, from the past few years, I've gotten really interested into uh, higher education, teaching and learning. And um, based on my own experience, um, I have used lots of innovation and technology in my teaching. Um, however, um, I'm very, very new to CMALT. I recently got to know about it, and uh, I'm almost beginning my journey of CMALT. And um, I just came back from the university five, 10 minutes back, and I was talking to one of the colleagues there at the south campus of AUT and figuring out how I should sort of go ahead with my portfolio and some of the components in it. So I'm really excited to be here and, um, yeah, looking forward to our chats and discussions. Cool. Thank you, Raj. And next we have Steve. Steve Virgins, all the way from Belgium. And uh, yep. I've known Steve for quite a number of years uh, through Alt-C. Um, and Steve was also uh, the one of the editors of uh, the uh, Research and Learning Technology Journal. So, um, yeah, we sort of crossed paths quite a bit. So. Yes, Steve, um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, hi everyone. Um, I live in Belgium, I work in the Netherlands, which is just, you know, 45 minutes across the border. Um, I work at the Open University in the Netherlands, and I'm a lecturer and researcher. I lecture in uh, education, so we have a master's degree in education. And my f focus is uh, quality of education and teacher training and development. So in that sense, I'm interested both as a... Uh, someone interested in learning technology, you know, to fill out my portfolio and, you know, try out the CMALT process. Uh, and also, you know, do some industrial espionage and see whether we could <laughs> copy some of, the, some of the processes and aspects to our own uh, professional development. Um, we have this scheme in the Netherlands, which is called Basic Educational Degree for uh, Higher Education Teachers. Um, which is also kind of portfolio based. And then we try to supplement that with some continuous professional development. So I'm just, you know, curious to see how CMALT works, but also from a personal professional point of view, I'd like to finalize my portfolio and get an extra accreditation if you'd like. Cool. Yeah. And then we have Todd. Now, Todd Stretton is a physiotherapy lecturer here at Auckland University of Technology, and Todd's been working on various projects with us for coming up, what, uh, just over two years now, I think, uh, Todd? Yeah, yeah, it has been um, a couple of years. So, yeah, as Tom said, I'm a physio by trade and um, have been working at AUT for uh, just over 10 years now. And um, a conversation really came up with, with Tom and that just trying to work out how to do things differently um, rather than the very didactic um what we would be doing with two hours of lecture and two hours of lab with our, our students. Um, and with physiotherapy, it's gone through a, um, a time of just looking at doing things differently as a profession as well. So I became interested in the technology there. 
So um, it just seemed to be a, a good fit um, as it was looking at how technology could be incorporated with, with education. Um, and our, our, our numbers keep on growing. Um, so we have about 200 uh, first year physiotherapists over the, and then um, have four years in our program. So um, it all gets a bit boring if we're doing things the same. So the CMOLT has certainly been a way to be able to, as you say, Stephen, get ideas from, from others to, to see how things could be done differently. And um, I've developed my portfolio through that and uh, hoping to hand that in in the, the next wee while. Awesome. So it's, it's great to see quite a variety of of people and a variety of where people are at as far as their um, CMOT portfolios go. So I guess the interesting thing is, um, you know, both Ian and Steve in particular, you guys have been working in education technology for a very long time, um, mm. but never got around to doing your CMOT portfolios. And I guess in a way that's probably a bit like myself. It was only in 2016 that I got around to putting my portfolio in. But, um, I found it to be a really beneficial process and it was a great reflective process as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I really encourage you guys to follow through with that and, and get it done this time. Okay. Um, let me just um, share the screen and uh, so we can look at where we're up to with the, with the CMOOC uh, at, uh, right now this week. Okay, so um, present to everyone might help. So hopefully you can see my screen there with uh, Steve with his grumpy face on. He's just uploaded a video <laughs> <laughs> to um, well, introduce himself it's, to it's, the community. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he told me before it's his morning face. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so as far as the CMO goes, for, for those who are watching and um, who haven't participated before, we've got two main hubs where the activity takes place. So we have the Google Plus community, and this is the discussion forum, the sharing place where people can post their where they're up to, comment on other people's work. You can see Raj has done a video, um, uh, Amanda's done one. Um, Culver has done one, and Culver's actually from Coventry University, so I don't know if you know, know, know uh, Culver, uh, Ian. I've worked with Culver, he's a very nice, very nice man, and really interesting to see what he brings to the table. He's working with the online uh, developments that are going on here in Coventry University, so you know, I think that'll be a very particular angle in the, um, in the discussions. Looking forward to hearing from him. Cool. So this is the place to sort of interact with uh, all the participants, feedback on where people are at. Down the left-hand side, you can find some more details about the uh, community. Um, we've put some categories there, basically, which follow the breakdown of a CMOL portfolio. And each week, we're basically following along, uh, looking at uh, each week, one of the core areas of a CMOL portfolio. So this week is the contextual statement, which is, I guess, what drives you, what, what motivates you to be a teacher and to use educational technology. And if you want to find all posts that are uh, have been tagged with contextual statement, just click on it and it'll bring them all into one page. Um, so that's just a quick way of finding stuff because there is a lot of stuff there already. This is the third iteration of the CMOOC and uh, instead of having to scroll forever to find stuff, if you use the categories to sort stuff, it's probably the best way to do it. And to get back to normal view, it's just all posts. So we've got a few categories there. And when you're posting stuff, you might like to make sure that you choose the appropriate category for your post so it goes into the right place. Um, there's also about this community where you can find our various other tools that we're using to communicate. So we have a WordPress hub. And uh, this is basically the weekly outline. Um, so we have a WordPress site and uh, basically we, we post there each week and then we copy the same stuff into the Google Plus community. But if you wanna look ahead and see what's coming, 
then look at the WordPress site, which is cmult, cmook.wordpress.com, and you can see we're broken down each week uh, into a set of activities that, that explore each of the core areas of a CMOT portfolio. So I guess one of the things that we recommend is, is maybe if you're just starting out to create your own portfolio, then WordPress might be a good tool to use. Um, I'm sure other, other people used other tools. Ian was using Spark. Um, but the key thing, I think, is trying to create a menu, a structure for your portfolio and following the core areas of uh, the CMOT uh, portfolio is an easy way to do that and structure it that way. So we might get Todd to demo his portfolio in a minute. Um, so we have various things on the WordPress site, a little bit different to the Google Plus, which is more of a discussion forum. This is more structured around, um, I suppose, us as administrators. But we have the sign up page, which is where you can join, or if there's anyone that you know that you'd like to join, send them towards the sign up page. And basically, it just gives us some tools to communicate. So uh, we suggest a Gmail address because we used, use Google Tools a lot, uh, including the Google Plus um, Google Map, where we try to everyone place themselves on the map so we get an idea of context. Uh, a blog, we suggest WordPress, but you can use any blog that has an RSS feed, which is basically anything really. Twitter, because we use it asynchronously, because Ian's always in bed when I'm awake and you know, vice versa. <laughs> um, the function of being on the other side of the world from each other. So it is, it is an international community and we'd, we'd like to use tools that allow us to do that. So that's why Twitter and of course Google Plus, so you can join the uh, discussion forum, the community. Question, Tom. Yes, Ian. Um, I was going through the Google Plus and you had a little competition going on the map. Um, 1,500 views, has that gone through? Has the prize been won? Yeah, I think we we're almost 1,550 now. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so, so I think you missed out. I'll have to get but the no. next, the 2,000 then I'll look forward to. Yeah, yeah, Let, let's, let's crack that pretty soon. So the, there is a link to the Google Plus map here on the left-hand side about the community on the Google Plus forum if you want to find it. Uh, here we go, participant map. Let's go and check it now. See what number of views we're up to. Fifteen hundred and fifty-six. So um, you can see the list of people who have put themselves on the map. There, it's not actually everyone who's involved, but uh, it's just a, an option for people who who'd like to share where they where they're from. And we can sort of uh, zoom in and out and see where people are around the world. So we actually have a couple of people from America this year, which is which is mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, quite a stack around the UK and Europe, quite a stack in New Zealand, obviously, and then a fair number in Australia, and we have one person in South Africa, which is uh, awesome as well. So we encourage people to maybe put some info onto their profile on the map. You can put uh, imagery in there. It's very simple to add yourself to the map. Um, it's by invitation only, so that's why you need to sign up, give us your Gmail address, and then we give you access to the map because we don't want it to get spammed. Um, so no crazy people will be able to edit the map. Uh, and then put some maybe a link to one of your profiles there so we can find out more about each other if you want to. You don't have to, but uh, it'd be great to have everyone put themselves on the map. And I think everyone who's in the webinar today actually has, which is awesome. So other tools that we use, um, pardon me for talking so much today, but I guess it's a bit of setup. There is the Twitter, using Twitter, and we use a hashtag. Um, so for any social media that you use, if you're going to use Facebook, not that um, I try to stay away from Facebook, but, you know, YouTube videos, any other social media, Instagram that you use, if you use the hash CMOT, CMOOC hashtag, then we can curate that content and bring it in. We have a Project Bank, which is on our WordPress site, uh, where we encourage people to share elements of their portfolio as examples. Um, so there's a category there for each part of the portfolio if it eventually loads. It's going very, very slowly. This one's hosted at AUT, that's probably why. Um, so we have the project bank and you can see there's an area there for examples from each core area of the CMOP portfolio. Some of these have more examples than others. So you might want to target areas that don't have too many yet. Um, and add to them. We have a lot in contextual statements, which is good. You click on there, you can see some of the contextual statements that have been shared, and you can rate these. So um, 
I think by default you, you get like a one star, but uh, you might want to give yourself more than one star initially. Um, you know, have a bit of a, a competition to see who can get the most stars and, and the uh, most number of views and votes. Um, so we look forward to uh, some contributions there from Steve. So to submit, you basically click on the submit project and then you choose the type of um, content that you are submitting. So you've got the seven different choices there. So yeah, by default, you get a one star. So you might want to give yourself more than one, you know, unless that is really a bad contribution. But uh, anyway, give it a title, give it a description, and then effectively, it's just a link to the example you're sharing. So it's a link to your portfolio, uh, which is on whatever blog that you choose to use. You can also upload an image to give it a bit of context, or else you'll just get the default CMOT, CMOOC um, icon there. Right. Um, that's probably enough of all the tools and bits and pieces right now. So any questions from anyone at this point? I'm going to stop my screen sharing and throw it back open to discussion. Oh, yes, we've got um, Raj and two people putting their hand up, very civilized. So Tom, uh, are you aware of someone who has used Mahara? Um to sort of compile their portfolio? And is it any good at all or? Some people have used Mahara. There's a, there's a whole variety of different portfolios. If you look at the alt, uh, alt website, uh, I can't remember the exact link, but they have a list of example portfolios, people who have chosen to allow their portfolios to be public and you can check out various different formats people have used. Um, there is no specific format you have to use. It's obviously best if it does include the use of some sort of technology, seeing it is about technology. Um, so a Word document might not get you too many stars. Um, yeah, I, I guess Mahara is fine. We just tend to find normally Mahara is hosted by institutions and, and password protected. So it becomes a bit of a hassle to share it with people and with your reviewers. Um, Better not. WordPress is probably a bit more open. Cool. But it's, it's your choice. No, no, so your recommendation is probably WordPress is sort of better. That would be my of... recommendation, but it's not, you don't have to use WordPress. Mm. Thank you. So, Ian, you, you were... Yeah, um, I was really coming in on that. And so there's two questions here, really. Um, the first, I'm intending to use, as we talked last time, Adobe Spark, which I'll have to subvert a little bit to make it work. But I think... Um, it will be something, it'll be interesting to try. Um, the reason I've looked at that tool is because I think although WordPress is, um, you know, it's a very solid tool, it's a very, it's got a lot of history and stuff like that. I think for a lot of people, it's still got quite a, a learning curve to get into, yeah. especially if you want to do what I call the more creative stuff. Um, and hence why I'm playing with Spark, which has got a very low learning curve, but then it's all about what you do with it would be my argument. Um, a general sort of question, Tom, is, in terms of the portfolio, is it a fairly formal thing that we're being required to put in? Obviously, if it's technology-based, it goes with the environment. But do we have the latitude to be a little bit creative with it, bring in the rich medias and things like that? Or would that be something which you say, yeah, it's good fun, use them as examples, but don't use it as part of your core statement? What would you say to that? Um, well, if you, if you have a look at mine, I've embedded a lot of stuff in there. Um, but I think the, the portfolio is a reflection of, of you and your character. And so it does, it's open to creativity and, and I would expect yours to be pretty creative. Um, but I think there's, there's, there's always two key areas to the CMOP portfolio. One is the evidence and the other is the reflection. So looking at each of the core areas, uh, make sure that you cover those two th aspects and all, all those core areas, evidence that you have done um, you know, you, you've, you can demonstrate uh, uh, capability in, in um, you know, the various core areas, but also that you then reflect on uh, what, what has been the impact on you for your practice, what has been the impact on your colleagues, perhaps, and definitely what has been the impact on your learners. Mm. Um, so it's the critical reflection is the key. So you can have evidence, but if there's no critical reflection, it's not going to get you the brownie points you need to get your portfolio. Uh, but yes, definitely be creative. So the vehicle is irrelevant. It doesn't really matter what we use, and we can be as creative or as 
boring as we want, but the key bit is that it has to have that message, that reflection, that evidence, um, whatever in there really, that's the key bit. Yeah, yeah. So um, Todd, what, what, are you, what are your thoughts? I mean, you're almost finished putting your portfolio together. Yeah, I, I would have to agree. Um, I, I went along the lines of WordPress, um, more because it was um, something that I was just learning for myself, um, more from a personal point of view, so that made sense for me. Um, I There was that learning curve in terms of um, playing around with different designs, but that might have been me just having a bit of a play around. Um, but I, I think that when you go back to the guidelines and you look at the different areas, um, as Tom pointed out on his WordPress or on the CMOL, um WordPress, um, I, uh, creating menus within WordPress that when that aligned with that helped me to then fit the evidence and 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 remind myself each time I was writing a blog. Um, and and as as Tom said, when when you're writing it, um, I, I tend to go more with a, a free writing and put in the different uh, pieces of evidence as I go. So whether it be video or something I've done as a how-to list, um, but then going back and and just making sure that you have got that description that you, I, I, I had to be a bit more explicit to say here is where my reflection is and, and put that as a, as a statement um, and then being clear as to what the impact has been on either my um, teaching or learning or those that I'm delivering it to. So at, at this end of trying to pull the portfolio together, it's been a matter of going back over the, the blogs that I've had and put those little bits of evidence together to make sure I've got those three components. Um, yeah, so I was probably a little bit more absent-minded at the time, but it, it allowed me to get something up there and um, it, it seems to be coming together okay now. So I think the as far as the contextual statement goes, um, that that's not an assessed part of the portfolio, but you have to have one. So it's kind of like the precursor, the introduction to your CMOP portfolio. Um, so it's a necessary item to include, and it kind of points, I suppose, to the reviewers the um, you know the direction the rest of your portfolio will take. But um, that, that doesn't get formally assessed. So you can probably be quite creative with your contextual statement there. Mm. Um, but yeah, sort of think it of think of your contextual statement as it's it's a story about you. It's um, what motivates you, what drives you, what has informed your practice, what are the key, you know, eureka moments uh, um, that, that, that then inform uh, your practice and your interaction with learning technology. So, Steve, I mean, Steve's right at the start of his. Yes, I was just looking over your portfolio, Todd, and you appear to have used uh, pages on WordPress instead of blog post is that correct or is it a combination of both or have you just structured your blog post and do a, a menu just a technical question that's it. yeah yeah um so so what i did was i set them up as blogs first um i put in the the twitter um hashtag on them so that that then went to uh, the likes of others, and I, I created an IFTTT so that it automatically went through the Twitter as well and onto the Google+. Plus. Um, you but can also make I, a direct link to uh, LinkedIn as well, so when you post it can uh, you know, end up in your LinkedIn profile too. Right. Oh, yes. yeah. So I haven't done that. But, um, but then once I had sent off the, the post... Um, I then went to the page that I saw it as being the best fit for and then um, typed in a few words and then hyperlinked it to that blog. Yep, so there's my blog post page, but then right, there's yes, the page, different pages for the portfolio and I've just hyperlinked them. Mm -hmm. Really just so that I didn't duplicate. So. Mm. So I think that's probably the hardest part of using WordPress is setting up your your menu structure yeah, and your exactly. pages and, and um, 
sometimes you can end up with duplicate pages if you're not careful and you end up mm -hmm. editing the wrong one and so you, you, you know you look around and see that it hasn't changed because it's actually not the one that's referenced in your menu um, but i think yeah creating that structure creating the outline mm -hmm. of your portfolio no matter what tool you use to start with personally i think is a good way to go because then you can have all the sections there ready to go and when you get the inspiration for a different section you just pop it in there and and start making the link between them later. Yep. So instead of it just being this huge thing that you work through, it's just sort of chip away at it. Yeah, mm. makes sense. Thanks. So, um, yeah, Todd, did you want to just quickly screen share uh, a little bit of your portfolio? Is this where I can say no? <laughs> <laughs> At least, it's, uh, at least it's embargoed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I'll just go for an entire. Here we go. We'll see if this works. So can you see the? Yep. Yep. Okay. So, um, yeah, thanks to both Tom and to Vickle, who's not on at the moment, um, but they've helped me with this um, structure. Um, so I have got the drop-down menus that um, you can select, but um, have also got the site map off to the side as well. Um, and it was just the comment of not being able to see the one to the one, sorry, to the one to the one A, etc. That on the site map, at least they can go directly to it when um, when they're reviewing. So I did my um, contextual statement, as you can see, back in October 2017, and I've, I've left that pretty much the same because I thought, well, that's relevant for that time. Um, but I understand you can update it as, as needed. Um, and then with all the, the different links, I, I actually started off with um, copying and pasting from the guidelines um, what they were actually looking for. So under 1A, they, they tell you what types of evidence would be beneficial to have there. So as I've been creating it, that has been there, but only just this morning I, I deleted it um, because I'm hoping to submit on the, the 30th. Um, but then with that, I've got the different points of evidence that have gone through. So my experience as far as just starting up with 360 cameras and using SeatBeat. So as you can see, I had the hashtag in there, so it meant it went to the right people, um, got some feedback almost instantly as to what people thought. Um, and then I would have some uh, evidence as I went through. Um, so where I might have done something like a, a cheat sheet to help demonstrate maybe another area in terms of deployment and support, then you know this was something that went out to staff so that they were able to use with the cameras that we have available. Um, so just trying to make those links as as I went. Um, I've also got the uh, so with the different sections. Um, so whether it be certificates that needed to be added in. Um, what else have got there? The one that I actually found the hardest was in terms of the wider context. So looking at that engagement with policy and procedures. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I reflected on some of the legislation here in New Zealand and what we need to do as health practitioners. Um, and another one was where we saw that within our university, we didn't have any guidelines about um, how we could be using audio or video recording for moderation of assessments. So just sh it started off with a brainstorm as to here's a, a gap that I've seen, um, the process that I went through in terms of trying to get that information, um, and then in terms of the reflection of how and what would be the best thing that I'd like to see in that and, and based on the conversations that I had. Um, and then again, it goes into the evidence for it and including the likes of emails that went to and from different people and then 
um, the memo that will go to the Board of Studies in terms of how we might um, have this eventuated as, as a part of policy. So, And I think one, one of the key things with um, putting together your portfolio is just remembering all the time that it's not about the technology. So <laughs> it's not about... Um, using technology by itself uh, it's not about teaching about technology it's about teaching with technology and how technology can enhance teaching and learning so that's the key thing is that critical reflection around how does technology enable ways of teaching that you couldn't before or make it easier or how does it get in the way and um, what are the constraints what are the benefits um, rather than just uh, you know teaching um, about technology, but it's teaching with technology. Ian? It was just a comment, Tom, really. Um, <clears throat> it's one of the things we sort of focus on here in the sessions that we do, is that we sort of open people's eyes up to technology, um, but it isn't always necessarily a good thing. And I'm wondering if in the portfolio, for example, you've had an experience where you've thought, well, I could bring in this particular technology to perhaps enhance some teaching in some way, or use it as a tool, but actually it turns out to be a complete and utter flop it doesn't work. Um, is it is that kind of experience something that one can bring to bear in one's reflections? I've I've never had a flop. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. Um, <laughs> no, actually, you learn the most for your mistakes, don't you? So, uh, but most people try to, um, uh, I get I guess get embarrassed or hide their mistakes, but. I think just opening up about the you know the critical reflection around what didn't work is is much more useful than you know this yeah. worked and, and it was cool and people liked it but it's more like uh, I tried this and it was a complete flop and here's why and this is what I did to change it for next time. Yeah, absolutely. I think in the end it's all still good reflection, and it it would be like having negative results in a, in research, isn't it? It's it's still informs others that are reading it so i'd like to know what doesn't work and 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 what your thoughts were about it so yeah cool so just thinking also um ian you've got some examples of uh the start of your portfolio in, in adobe spark i think you linked to them in the project bank so if people want to check out spark um there's probably still some there but as you develop it be great to see some more examples there for the different sections. So um, I think Raj was asking about examples before. So the other place to check them out is that project bank on the, on the mm. WordPress site um, and look at the different sections there um, because everyone's using different tools and, and uh, putting links to different types of portfolios there. Hey, well, um, thanks guys. We've, we've sort of um, gone over time and um, I know you're all, you know, first thing, go and have your breakfast, and uh, Raj has got to put the kids to bed, and, um, you know, Todd's got to put the dog to bed. Um, so thank you very much for interacting with us. It'd be great to, to have the team together uh, each week and just sort of review uh, the week's activities for the CMOOC and discuss um, where people are at. And, um, and I know we've got at least four people who've been watching this live the entire time, which is awesome, and... Hopefully there'll be some people watch it later as well in the archive. So thank you all. Once again, I'm going to stop the broadcast now and uh, we'll catch everyone again next week.